protect the audience and participants for each other. Information practices, historical practices, cultural practices. Examples of women sharing what you say you do, sharing how you do that. There's no way you can ignore Latinos anymore. Welcome all around the world. Yeah. 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 Talk about what time is it now? Uh, can you help? Inspiring Pinball Voices International Playwriting Festival. My name is Frank Henschke and I'm the director <coughs> of the program. We, Bridge Academia and Professional Theater International and American Theater here at the Siegel Center, and especially the International Theater is something we are struggling with here in the US. We do not hear enough voices compared to world music, which we listen to music all around the world. We do not hear all the voices. 95% of all books published uh, in the US are in come from English-speaking writers. Only 5% that are left uh, are, uh, half of them are German or French because of subsidies. So the 2% are really do not allow us to get a full view of the world. It's, uh, I think, as we all think, not a right, not a good thing, and perhaps also an explanation why things are so complicated at the moment. We are honored to collaborate with Penn, the writers' organization, an organization, as we heard this morning, at the cross between uh, the literature and the human rights. They have brilliant, uh, writing in prison programs, they get writers out of prison, they support uh, uh, truly uh, translators, uh, give out significant awards, and this is the most meaningful and uh, significant uh, literary festival in the US, uh, in North America perhaps, and perhaps all things the Americas, so, uh, to be up to, of course, uh, discussion, but we think so, and it's an honor for the Siegel Center to be part of it, and we already heard uh, yesterday voices from Australia, the Ukraine, uh, from Turkey and uh, from Brazil, and um, this morning, and uh, and now we're going to go over to Guinea. Unfortunately, um, due to new visum and regulations, the writer was not allowed in the country. We uh, fought very, very hard, but it was not possible. Uh, Brooke uh, helped us to get a little miracle for the writer from Syria, from Spain, who came in and came in for Sunday. But it's a very, very uh, unsettling, uh, disturbing. Uh, uh, reality we faced uh, that because of the current political, political situation, a writer was not allowed into the country because of his passport. And uh, we uh, urge everybody to do work, you know, to, uh, to change uh, what it is here and uh, to take that seriously. It's always the arts, very often as seismographs, very first detect what is coming and which earthquakes are might be waiting for us. But now, uh, still, we have uh, his uh, a play from uh, Hakeem Ba. I hope he will be seeing us uh, if you are on the live stream. So we welcome you and we are terribly sorry. We apologize that you are not able to uh, be with us here and maybe we will Skype him in and he will be somehow have a presence but not the real ones. This festival really tries very hard to have every playwright here in person. So maybe the playwrights uh, put out their arms. You see them so here from uh, who, who came also, Marcia, from, from this morning. And we be part of a lively discussion with their bodies in the room, and we think this is of importance, and this is also what changes, we think, people's minds. Um, we would like to thank uh, Ethan McSweeney for directing uh, the play, and uh, Heather Daniel for uh, being the translator and also part of the discussion. Heather, Heather who also is here in the World Center. Also suggested this way, she really went on a big, big, big research trip uh, with hundreds of plays from the African continent, which she researched, and she said this is something we should all listen to. So uh, here we go. Before we start the reading, please do take on yourself while I'll do the same. And uh, make sure power is off, take it, you all take it out and double check that it doesn't ring. It never rings in our readings, and it hasn't so far. So thank you for uh, doing this. and. Um, here we go, thank you.
by Hakeem Bach, translated by Heather Denyer. The faint odor of rice, manioc, mango, guava, lemon, orange, banana, tomato, onion, outside. The stench of garbage strewn along the streets outside. The upheaval of dust with each upheaval of feet outside. The blares of cars outside. The gurgling of drinks going the wrong way in dry throats outside. The rumbling of the sky outside. It is going to rain again outside. outside. One, here. This animal beauty, sexy chic, her hair smoothed out. Her almond eyes. Her little pointed nose. Her round mouth. Her plump lips. This long-limbed silhouette. Her never-ending legs. This nymph look that makes you throw up in your mouth this double X chromosome face. Her eyes like jewels. Look at her again. The set eye. Her winks that cause you to burst, to slobber in your shorts. It's her. Our Tisha Tisha. Named Tisha Tisha. She. Likes to be called Tisha Tisha. She. Plays the mermaid with that lively, insincere, rosy smile. She. Clips her nails. She. There is what you know and what you don't know. That which you know in the worst cases, you know it. You don't need to try to know because you know. That which you don't know in the worst cases, you don't know. You try to know because you don't know. There's no point in pretending to say that you didn't when you actually did. To say that you didn't break the glass even though you broke the glass, if you know deep down that you broke the glass, there's no point to say that you didn't break the glass. If you break the glass and deep down, deep, deep down inside, you know that you broke the glass, there's nothing more normal than to say, yes, yes, I broke the glass, yes, yes, it was me. I broke the glass to not say, no, no, it wasn't me. I didn't break the glass, and you know deep down, deep down inside, yes, yes, I broke the glass. There's a similar story of the glass between Michael, at least there was between Michael and me, because I don't know anymore if there is, if there will be something between us. He broke the glass, and he didn't want to say that he broke the glass. If you know that you can't say, yes, yes, it's me when you do something, then why do it? In the end, we're always smacked in the face by our actions, good or bad, whether we recognize them or not. It doesn't leave us, it always catches us. Nail file or nail polish, she. I had always thought that, that he was lucky for me. Knowing him was lucky for me. Having him by my side was lucky for me. He was really good and lovable, seemed to be good and lovable, Michael. At that moment, Tauntaun had finished stuffing himself with me. Tauntaun is his name. It's my uncle. I called him Tauntaun because he told me to call him Tauntaun. At 12 years old, he deflowered me. In the house where we lived with two wives, Tauntaun arranged to find me a small room, very small room, reminds me still, reminds me where he came at night, every night, almost every night, after Moss to quench his thirst before returning to his wives. When he left the little room, very little room, my room it was, what would you call it, ridiculous? There you go, there you go, it was ridiculous. I couldn't keep myself from laughing when he pushed, pushed, pushed in the door, the little door, the very little door of the room, my room, gently, slowly, when he shut it, gently, slowly, when he walked, gently, slowly, as if he didn't want to let his feet touch the ground out of fear that it would make noise, that it would draw attention. Day after day, this repeated. My belly started to become bloated. I was pregnant. I didn't know, didn't even know, but then again, how could I know? It was at the age of 13 or 14. I don't even remember too well anymore. All of a sudden, I was kicked out of the house. I wandered the streets, scampered along the rooftops, slept by the light of the moon or under the street lamps with my stomach. When I gave birth, I didn't know how to do it, what to do with this kid. I detested this kid. I didn't know why, but I detested him. I wanted to leave him on the street, the little body wrapped up in a cloth in the middle of a garbage heap to rid myself of this burden. It was there, there, there that he appeared, Michael, like a holy light. He helped me to raise her and to support her. He loved her. He loved that kid from the first steps. It was clear. Plucks her eyebrows. She. He didn't want to have her clitoris cut, to have her private parts sliced like I, had, like I had done to me. Little, very little, and like they still do to all the girls her age. When he left me for her, Michael, it was then, then that I understood, understood everything, understood he didn't want for her clitoris to be cut, that her private parts be sliced off like I had done to me, like little, very little for him. He wanted to keep her intact without undoing anything for him. Idiot, idiot, what an idiot, what an idiot that was, having him not realize a way and cut off her clitoris, slice off her private parts like I had done to me. Very little, very little, and like they still do to all the girls her age. That would have been better, that would have been better, that would have been better. But fine, it's Michael, after all, it's Michael, after all, Michael is Michael. After all, and then, and then, after all, in life, nothing is ever like we'd like it to be. Things never follow the lines we've drawn. Not one path really flat and really straight in life. It's packed with holes, hills, slopes, bends, zigzags. Two, you hear a door slam. Q. 
key that crick cracks in the mouth of lock. Bang of the door that opens and closes again. And there he is. Our man with the fake skin. Michael, as he's called, likes to be called Michael the King. Michael, the source of purgatory. It's him. Bandage on the nose. Michael! It's Michael. It's Michael, finally, before my eyes, a few feet before my eyes, in the flesh and bones. Has everything stopped? End of purgatory? Are you back for good? Why did you wait for so much time, all this time? It's days like that when you least expect it that people show up. When you want them to show up, they never show up. It's when you least expect it that they show up like a disease, always without warning. No, I don't condemn, don't condemn, you don't condemn him. Maybe he was right. Maybe he was right. I didn't even want to know. Right or not right, he had to pack his bags and leave. Whatever. The essential, he is here, before my eyes. I can even touch him. I want to touch him. I can touch him. I just need to. If I want to touch him, if I want to, I only need to. I get up. Get, get up. up. Approach him. Approach him. If I really want to touch him. Does she really want to touch to him? To stroke his face, to stroke his head, to stroke his limbs, to stroke his chest, to stroke any part of his body. To touch, to stroke. I just need to, to, to touch him with my hand if I want to touch him. Don't touch me. No, touch me. <laughs> I won't touch you. It's fine. I won't touch him. I was going to touch him in that same instant. My hand was going to reach around and touch him. You skulls don't touch me. It's fine. You don't need to scold. I understand you don't touch me. I won't touch you. You said don't touch me. I heard you don't touch me. I won't touch you. Looks. That are exchanged. That are passed back and forth. Circular. Semi-circular. Direct. She stares at him. He stares at her. They stare at each other. Oval each other. Devour each other. At length. Deeply. Immensely. And then, and then, and then. Let it go. Sleep. Let go. Let go of my suitcase. Let me put oh. it in the bathroom. You, Michael. Your paws, your paws on my suitcase. Don't even try. Just let me. Don't, don't need, don't need. I don't need you. Understand? Huh? Can you understand that? Huh? I don't need. You don't need. You don't need. I understand. You don't need that I put it in the bedroom for you. Your suitcase. You don't need. I've understood. Understood. Let go. Let go. My hand it hurts. You're hurting me. Really, really hurting me, Michael. There it is. It leaves to collapse on the sofa. Hardly turned up. Leaves to collapse on the sofa. It doesn't even take off his clothes or his shoes. Super looks smooth, criminal. Suit, shirt, pants, tie, shades, wig, hat that he wears. He must be warm. He stares at me again. I stare at him again. We stare at each other again, happy to just blink our eyes. Look at him. He senses my winks, my nymph look. I feel his winks on my breasts, my face, my lips, his eyes. I feel them like jewels. He looks away, and me, and me, I am still devouring him with my eyes. I can't help myself from devouring him with my eyes. Strong becomes stronger. Whatever he's come from had very good food, it's clear. I sniff his perfume, nice the smell of Nivea. Yes, he loves Nivea, his only fragrance. Nivea for men, deodorant. I smell, I smell, what, how should I put this? Something reeks in my nostrils. Something smells. Me, I don't smell anything here. There's nothing but your savory odor of Nivea, Michael, that is emitted. Look at that, he puts his finger on the button, wants to push it to turn on the TV, but Michael, what are you doing? It doesn't please you? My picture doesn't please you? But you used to like it, my darling, that picture of Tisha Tisha, the low-cut dress that reveals the contours of your pretty little tits, you said. You said that, that said, that said, that said to me often, you remember. I know that you remember well, you could not remember. Well, he picks it up, dear Michael. Oh, no, 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 Michael, don't throw it, don't throw it, don't throw it like that, it will break, he throws it. My picture, Michael, my picture. I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. You're bending over your suitcase. He opens his suitcase. Look at my photo with the broken frame. Don't come near. Don't come near. Don't come near me. It's fine. It's fine. You don't need to scold me again, Michael. I understand you. Don't come near. Don't come near. Don't come near. Don't come near me. Are you happy? You can be happy. Happy. I understood. Understood. Tisha, Tisha always understands when you speak to her. You know little, darling. She's interested. But, but, but what is there that's inside? Inside there, Michael. You brought me something. Huh, Michael? My darling, you brought me a little something to Tisha Tisha, huh, huh? Get back. Easy, Michael, easy. You almost made me fall down. Does that make you happy that Tisha Tisha falls down? Doesn't make you happy, huh, darling? Have you got there? Not, not your business. Not your business. It's not at all your business. Stop messing around. Stop messing around, Michael. Let me see. Just see. Get back. The photograph. The photograph that you have there, Michael. Write a photograph. Who's in the photograph that you're hanging there? Who? You don't see. Don't see. Don't see anymore, huh? Not anymore? Michael, but, but, but Michael. But, but Michael what? Can you just tell me? Are you going to tell me that you expected to find an emptying the house, huh? What did you expect to find? She told you. She told you. She told me that she was coming to tell you. She can't have not told you, Penda. She told me she was coming to tell you to leave so we could finally have our house. And, and where is she anyway? Where is Penda? There it is. You just said, said her name again. Her. Penda. My daughter. What? Fifteen years? Maybe even more now? My undone sex penda, the female never undone. Intact? To find penda soft, softer, much, much softer than me. Nothing left in my sex, no pleasure, he said, he said, he said, that no end, end, and for penda, my daughter left me. With her, he finally found, found heaven, yes, yes, heaven, he said, heaven. 
and the sex of my daughter. He finds his heaven blessed, Michael. And so he left, left with her. I don't know, never knew where they went, far, far away from me to continue to calmly dream in their foolish actions, the heart, the body, at peace, as if there was nothing abnormal all this time. Salt on the wound. Just thinking about it makes me feel like salt on my wound. You shouldn't have asked me that, Michael. Where is Penda? Nearly a week ago, she told me that she was coming here, and no news since then. Can you tell me where she is? After all your dirty tricks, you dare to ask me again, where is she, Michael? My daughter. Can you try to imagine, Michael, my own daughter? You didn't hesitate. You didn't hesitate. You defiled her, soiled her, messed her up all this time like your little whore without recourse. You just did but just a little bit, Michael, about what you've done. Shame, shame, shame on you, Michael. Can you tell me yes or shit? You should be ashamed. Ashamed, ashamed to ask me that, to ask me that again. Where is Linda? That is my question. You hear me? You hear me? You hear me? You are detestable, despicable, hateful. I should detest you, despise you, hate you. I don't understand why I'm not able to, and I absolutely should detest you, despise you, hate you. You can answer me yes and stop whining like a kid. Fine, I don't know where she is. Is your pen done? Look for her. You'll find her, and you won't find her. Seek, and you shall find. What's that? You seek, seek, and you shall find. Look for her and stop with your where is Panda? Where is Panda? Where is Panda? It's really annoying, and it bores me, bores me, bores me more and more in my heart hearing that. Just stop it. Stop it. Stop your chatter right now. I don't care if it bores you, bores you, bores you or not. I don't care. Don't care. Don't care. You hear? Don't care. I don't care. No, Michael, I beg you. I beg you. You don't need to get upset. Don't need to. Don't need to. He doesn't need to get upset, Michael. It's not good that he gets upset, Michael. Not good. Not good. Calm down, please, Michael. Calm down, my darling. Calm down. It's all right. Voila. He finally turned on the TV. Sits in front of the TV. What is it that stinks? Stinks here. Stinks. Something stinks, stinks. Nothing stinks, Michael, my darling. Nothing stinks. Except for the delicious smell of Nibio wafting through the air. It's starting to become unbearable here. Maybe it's just a bad smell coming in here from outside. Wait, wait, I'll bring you something from the fridge. I know that makes you happy. Will make you happy like that. Yes, yes. Wait. Wait, wait, drink, drink, drink. It helps to calm your nerves. It's even the bottles you adore, the whiskey, the good stuff. The really good whiskey, Michael. All that, only for you. You see, you see, you see. Tisha, Tisha thinks of everything, of everything. When you're not here, my darling, he loves to live, Michael. And how he drinks. 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 Scotch. Black Label. Johnny Walker. How he drinks. 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 It's his way of living. Living life. Living life, living life well. Living life to the fullest. Living, taking advantage of his life, taking advantage of it with such inebriation, pours his whiskey in his glass. Look at the bottle of whiskey pissing into the glass. Listen to the glug glug of whiskey pissing into the glass. Oh my, my drink, drink, drink his whiskey and listen, listen, listen to the glug 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 of his throat. He's laughing, Michael, he's laughing. His whiskey and the glug 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 of the whiskey in his throat, he's laughing. It pleases him, please, please. Body, body that is aroused. Drink, drink, drink. Body, body that is reanimated. Drink, drink, drink. Body, body that is swaying. Drink, drink, drink. Body, body that is fidgety. Drink, drink, drink. Body, body that is agitated. Drink, drink, drink. Body, body that undulates. Drink, drink, drink. Fever of the moonwalk. Strong fever of the moonwalk. High fever of the moonwalk. That increases. That rises. That rises. Again. 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 Only gestures. Nothing resists the fever anymore. Nothing anymore. Drink, drink, drink. I drank. I, I drank. I, I, I drank. I, did I drink? You drank, Michael. You drink your whiskey. You feel better, huh? Doesn't make you feel better. I must, must, must not, must not drink. Must not drink you more. Drank, drink, drink, Michael. You didn't drink. Didn't drink. Didn't drink. Drink, drink, drink. Didn't drink a lot. Didn't drink a lot. Didn't drink a lot. Drink a lot. Drink a lot. Drink a lot, Michael. I drank. I, I drank. I drank. Is that true? I drank a lot. Drank a lot. Drink a lot. Michael. No, Michael didn't drink. Didn't drink, didn't drink, didn't drink a lot, didn't drink a lot, didn't drink a lot. Michael doesn't drink, no longer drinks. Promised, Penda. I stopped, I stopped, I stopped. Promised, Penda. You drink, you drink, you drink, you lose your head. Your head is no longer your head, you lose your head, you got no more head. You groan, you groan, you groan like a dog. You piss, you piss, you piss like a faucet. You vomit, you vomit, you vomit like a hemorrhage. She said, she said to me, Penda, well I stopped. I stopped drinking, Penda, that, that I said. I said to her, I said, beer, whiskey, not touching anymore. Projection. Never again. Of a bottle. Never again. Of a bottle. Never again. Of a bottle. And why not? Of whiskey. And why not? Of whiskey. And why not? Of whiskey. Scotch. Black label. Johnny Walker. Michael. Against the TV, it breaks. Michael. Against the wall, it breaks. Michael. Against the ground, it breaks. Michael. Against the ceiling, it breaks. 
ceiling, it breaks. Michael. Against the door, it breaks. Michael. Against the window, it breaks. Michael. Against the fridge, it breaks. Michael. Against the table, it breaks. Michael. It breaks. It breaks. It breaks. Sound of the breaking. 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 Free, and no one's gonna save you. That's it. He's locked himself in the bathroom. He breaks, breaks, breaks the bottles and locks himself in the bathroom. It happens often. Yes, yes, often. The urge need to go to the bathroom. Why is that, huh? The need, the need, the little need. Apparently, he had a great need, that little need, huh? Michael, my darling, you had a great need, huh? You were burning inside, huh? You were going to die of need to put yourself at ease, huh? Isn't it true, isn't it true that the desire was gnawing away at you? So good to make yourself at ease, your home. Make yourself at ease, my darling. Take all the time you need and free yourself, yourself, free yourself. You have all the time for it. You're at home, take your time, all your time, and put yourself at ease, put yourself at ease, put yourself at ease. Michael, my darling, all good, all good, all good. Huh? It feels good, feels all good to put yourself at ease when you need to put yourself at ease. If a little need pushes us, pushes us, pushes us nonstop. Oh, Michael, my little darling, it feels good, good, huh? Huh? That? I know something of it. We all know something of it, how good it feels to put yourself at ease when the need, that little need, pushes us. Take your time. Take your time. Michael, my darling, take your time. He takes his time, my darling. He must have a full stomach to discharge today, but be careful all the same to not empty everything out, to go to the point of emptying everything out. There are rumors spreading my cholera, strutting along the streets. Michael! Good. He's finally calming down. I couldn't wish for more. Michael, my darling, you hear me? Tisha, Tisha is calling you. Answer if you hear. Go away. Go away. He speaks to me, speaks to me. Is everything all right in there, darling? You're going to go away, right? Everything all right? Okay? Is everything okay in there? Why are you asking if it's okay? Just to know if it's okay, if my darling is doing well, okay? Okay? Michael, are you okay? Why? Why do you want to know if it's okay? Won't cease to ask, to ask me if it's okay. <laughs> everything there is easy, Michael. Don't get upset, don't get upset. You do not need to get upset again. It's not good for you to get upset. You can catch a lot of illness in getting upset, you know? Seriously, what the fuck is it to you whether I'm upset or not? I like it when he speaks, when he speaks to me, reassuring to hear him speak. I want, you know with the shards of a body you can split your skin and hurt yourself. I want to know if you haven't hurt yourself. At least you hear him, huh, Michael, my darling? You see, Tisha, Tisha worries about you, darling. She worries. She doesn't want you to be bad, to hurt yourself, Michael. You don't have. You don't, you needn't. Me? Worry? For me? Need not. Need not, need not. Now listen, it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He's coming back to better feelings now. It's reassuring, reassuring, reassuring. Tell me, Michael, your business there, you're doing all right in there, huh? It's starting to rise again until it penetrates my nose. It stinks like nothing else. Have you been eating only American sandwiches or what? Only American sandwiches stink like that stinks when you relieve yourself. When it's good, it stinks, they say that, huh, Michael? When it's good on the tongue, it reeks in the ass. Ah! You nearly smashed my face. Look, it's bleeding a little. Yes, you made me bleed, see? Well done for you. That'll teach you not to accost the door when people are in the bathroom. It'll really change, you know, Michael. Your nose, your nose, for example, it's no longer the same. You no longer have the same. What exactly is this little bandage that I haven't stopped staring at? I was always waiting for the right moment to ask it that. I redid my nose, idiot. Idiot, he said, said to me. It's good. It's a good sign. A good sign. It means that means he's really coming back to thoughts. He's in a good mood when he starts to say little words like that. It's remarkably better. Your nose. Become almost looks brand new. Your nose, Michael. For Penda, I redid my nose. For her. She didn't want my nose anymore. The other nose, the old nose, it was too much. What, how to put it, too much? Hideous. There it is, hideous. It may be too ugly, even though deep down I know I'm not ugly. Needed to just rearrange my nose a bit, a tiny bit, and I became the handsome kid I was meant to be. Now I feel, I feel it even myself. I'm no longer the same. Oh, my, this little nose brings such luck. <laughs> To annoy me, that penda penda. No, 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 don't need to, don't need to. Control, control, control. I don't need to get worked up. Teach, teach, get worked up. Not good, not good. Teach, teach, get worked up. Michael gets worked up, not good. Penda, penda, you're gonna hear only that here. Penda, only that, only that. Let that sink in well to your fucking brain. And then, and then, and then. Let go of my neck, Michael. Come on, let go. What is it now? What is it now that you can never understand? Listen to me really well. It's time. Yes, yes, time. No more. No more time to lose. It's really time for my home becomes my home again. My house becomes my house Michael, again. Your home is always your home. Your house is always your house. And me, like always, I'm here. 
I watch over the house. I tend to it like a baby. Order, organize, reorganize, cleaning up all the time. Nights I clean, days I clean, I mop, I remop nonstop. You end up telling yourself, certainly finished by telling yourself that this man, Michael, has left for good. Huh? This house, his house became my house. I can die and dig my grave here. Not even one brick in this house, not even one belongs to you. So no need to leave. You need to leave right now. For you, I stay here all these years, Michael. You can't. No, Michael, you can't be outside. No, 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 Michael, I have nowhere to go. You're not going to go. Shouldn't. All the same, don't do it. All the same, Michael. Let go of me. Let go. Let me go. Let me go on. It's done. There's no more going back. Even my breasts, even bigger, even larger, they've become. You don't want to fill me up just a little bit? Just no. a little bit? No. You could just. No desire. It doesn't cost a cent to touch. You can just touch my golden. No desire. For you, all these years, I've kept even bigger, even larger. My breasts No desire. Can. Look at my ass. Do you like it, huh? The melon cheeks. Do you like it? You want to? No, don't my want to. My undone mm. sex. I remade it. Dr. Fossil remade my sex for you, Michael. A simple surgery. Effective. He resuscitated my sex. Gave me back my soul, my sex, that which interfered with our body to body, smashed my new erogenous zone more and more than pleasure for you. You want it? Don't want to, don't want. Then let me touch you, feel your body. Oh, it's building up in me the desire to touch you, to feel your body. Just a second, you'll be asking me for more. Shut up. Then let Michael I give you my body. Shut up. Touch, touch my body. Shut up. Feel, feel my body. Shut up. Stroke, stroke my body. Shut up. Touch my body, feel my body, stroke my body. Shut Come up. In my body. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Is that all you have in your mouth? Shut up, Michael. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Quiet, I'm not in the mood. He's not in the mood. It's normal. He's not in the mood. At 99 degrees, nothing more normal than he's not in the mood. Despite the rain that increasingly threatens the weather, my forecast 99 degrees normal, but he is a bundle of nerves. He's hot. You can tell that he's hot. Walking under the hot sun, you get hot. Right away, you're dripping in sweat. It dances all over your body. The sweat, the heat, Michael. Oh, the heat, the sweat, the heat, the heat, the heat, the sweat. Oh, you can see the heat, the drops of sweat, and the dance on your feet. Look, Michael, you're sweating like nothing else. Your jacket, take it off. Let me just... Not me. It's all right, it's all right, Michael. I understood. You're not me. I want you. I still get you some water. Huh, Michael? I smell. I smell, I, I smell like something rotten, stinks, you that stinks. You need a bath, Michael. A good bath will only do you your, good. Your water, your bath, your good bath, no desire. And then, and then, and then, you don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, you don't stop, you don't stop speaking to me. It makes me sick to my stomach when you speak to me. I speak to you, I speak to you, you get sick, that makes you sick. You speak to me, you speak to me, I feel sick, that makes me sick. All of a sudden, I feel a fever climbing my flesh. Listen to him, I speak to him, I speak to him, he feels that sick, that makes him sick. All of a sudden, he feels a fever climbing his flesh. You have bad manners, Michael, yes, you really do. You're always the same, always have been the same, with always doubtless be the same, you'll never change. Silence. I want silence. Can you understand that? Silence. Yes, silence. Okay, silence. He likes silence. I like silence. I like it when he makes his silence. In silent mode, I prefer him. When he says nothing, handsome. In silent mode, more handsome. In silence mode. Yeah. When he lets the silence drift. When he lets the silence float. When he lets the silence dominate. Handsome. When he says nothing. When I say nothing. No one says anything handsome. We're only happy to just feel our presence, to smell the fragrances of our presence. His Nivea for men deodorant, I smell it. Four, your body starts to shiver. Pestilent odor. Of rotten, rotten. Of already rotten. Of already, already rotten. Fat more and more. Increases. 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 What is it that stinks? Stinks endlessly. Rotten chicken or rotten pork that makes me want to vomit. My, my word, that makes me want to vomit. He has skin softer, whiter. There. A fly lands on his softer, whiter skin. He wants to swat it, miss accuracy. The fly is blown away. I am drinking in with my eyes. He brushes me away with a brisk look. He quickly turned away. I don't know what he did with Penda all this time, and I don't want him to tell me. I don't want to know. Only as he is there, right in the line of my eyesight, just a few inches in front of me, it's enough. Just a kiss. Give me a little kiss. I want you to give me a teeny tiny, just a teeny tiny kiss on the lips. Now look at how they shine, Michael. No more touching your body. Take good stock of that in your thick head. When you left, it was sad in the house, Michael. It was sad in the house. Only calm in the house. Only silence in the house. Only barking dogs and only chattering toads would I hear. Sometimes, weekends or holidays. Only intermittent humming of cars, screeching or tires or the pavement, blaring or music I would hear. Stench, stench, stench. It stinks. It, it stinks. I would it listen stinks. to these nightly rituals night after night, Michael. It seemed so big to me, the house, as if suddenly the house, since you left, had increased in surface area, in length, in width, in height. I would spend my lonely nights staring at the ceiling, lying on the mattress, my eye, kissing tears. Dream after dream, I saw you again at the far end of my intimate space. God, how 
Oh, it stinks. It stinks. It stinks. It stinks. I only smell that subtle and agreeable fra the fragrance of Nivea that escapes from your body and crosses my nostrils. What is that horrible odor of rotten meat that chokes the breath out of you? Vomit. Oh. Vomit. Oh. Vomit. Oh. Vomit. Oh. Uh. Oh. Vomit. You vomit. You vomit. You don't stop vomiting. What makes you vomit like that, Michael? Huh? Let me smell your fragrance again. Let me go. To smell, I want to again. Your good smell of Nivea, I want to again. How long was I waiting for this moment? These flies, mosquitoes, starving. Can can you explain to me why these rude flies, mosquitoes, who kiss my skin without permission? This white skin that you have, and I've never seen so white. Oh my, really, what? This white skin that you have. White skin just as soft as flies, mosquitoes are dying to touch. It pleases them too, flies, mosquitoes, the white skin, soft. Didn't redo my skin for these flies, mosquitoes, you flutter, flutter, flutter. There, over there, here, over what there. Tell me, Michael, openly, let me ask you, your epidermis that I see has become even clearer and whiter. Is it yours, or did you white your skin further? Sometimes black your skin, sometimes white your skin. I knew it, read illegal, your illness, the doctor said you do remember. I redid my skin, can't you see anymore? White, very white, my skin, whiter. Couldn't stand my skin discolorations anymore. Penda, no longer acceptable blotches of depigmentation. Penda. 50 even, older than younger you look. Quite young I am. Look, look, my white skin just as white, soft, just as soft, innocent. I still have some adolescence in me. Handsome you are, Michael. Even more handsome you become. Adorable, even more adorable you have become. This body, your body, glistening like a ray of sunshine. Let me, I want to. Can I touch your skin? Feel your skin? Stroke your skin? Don't touch me. Definitely not. Don't even try. It's fine. I've understood you. Don't even try. It's still what you want, and I do not touch you, okay? I won't touch you. won't touch you. won't touch you anymore. won't touch you. Ever try again. The odor. The odor. The odor. The odor. The odor? What odor? The odor. The odor. In the name of God, that vague and unbearable odor that's emitting there. Unbearable? Pierces me. Pierces me. Pierces my nose. Pierces, pierces, pierces you? Cuts off. Cuts off my breathing. It cuts off my breathing, that filthy odor. Your, 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 your breathing block. Stop. 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 Stop taking me for an idiot. Tell, 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 tell me, tell me what this pungent, what this unbearable odor emitted by rotten chicken, by rotten pork, by rotten dog, by rotten cat, or what, huh? Chicken, rotten, chicken, pork, rotten pork, dog, rotten dog, cat, rotten cat. I'm asking you, you you're asking me? You can cut that out, yes. And tell me this elusive odor that incessantly blocks my olfactory, olfactory sense, prevents me from breathing well, well, truly, well, well. Where does it come from? It comes from, 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 where does it come from? From... From, 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 from. If that's not the stench that prevents me from inhaling deep, deep, deep breath, it's the flies who are fluttering, fluttering in my ears. Worse, bite, bite me, prick me, prick my body without my permission. My skin, how it itches, itches, itches. Where is it from? From where? From, from where? From, from, from. From where? From there. Over there. Over there. Where? Over there. Over there, where? From. From? From over there, over there. Where, where are you going like that? Over there. Where? Over there. In the bedroom? Where? This filthy odor is coming from over there? Where? Fine. Rot inside a corpse's shell. Cupboard is covered in a cupboard. The corpse stashed away in the cupboard. How many days stashed away in the cupboard? How many already? Fluttering flies, mosquitoes. The smell of uh, putrefaction. The petrified flesh. <laughs> Stench. Ah. Stench. Oh. Stench. It smells of repugnant perfume of death. It's the repugnant perfume of death. It smells of the repugnant perfume of the rotten corpse. It's the repugnant perfume of the rotten corpse. Stench. Oh. Ah. Stench. Ah. Oh. Stench. The terrible odors compressed in the rotten corpse. The feast for the flies, mosquitoes, rats, roaches. What is it? What? 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 What is that? What? What? What is there inside? What? 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 What is there? You did not really. Say that you did not, 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 that's, that's not you, not you who did, that you did not, 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 not at all, you did not, did not, no, no, it's not you, who did it, not you, not, you tell me, it's not you, not you. To say that no, no, I didn't, yes, yes, I did, it's not going to say that no, no, I didn't, when, yes, yes, I did it, to say no, no, it's not me, when, yes, yes, it's me. It's you who, no, 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 it's not you, not you who swear that it's not you who swear, that I hear you swear, that it's not you who, not you who, not that you did nothing, nothing, that you did not, 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 did do not do that, you, you did that? No, 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 you didn't do that. Swear, swear that, swear that, swear that, that swear that, that. What, swear that what? Nothing to swear, Michael, and stop whining like a child. Why did you? You did, you did, you did.
did, you did, you did. Why? Do you realize what you did? What, 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 what you've done? What I had to do. What, what you have, have, have just done? What I've just done, I had to do. I did what I had to do. What's more normal? You leave Penda to rot in this fucking cupboard and you talk, talk calmly as if nothing, like nothing happened. You say, you say again what you just did. You, you had to do what you had to do. You had to do what you had to do. It was necessary to do. I did it. Did what I had to do. I did it. For better or worse. Good for her. Good for me. Even good for you. You don't drive over the mother. You drive over the daughter like a highway and she lets you. She's dead. You realize dead, 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 emptied of her breath, of her blood, of everything, of everything, of everything. The disgusting body in the process of rotting in this fucking cupboard, rotting, stashed away in this fucking cupboard. The body, the body, Penda, impossible to even go near you it. You love her. You love to touch her, to fuck her, so touch her, fuck her there again, my daughter, the way you like it. Take her skirt off and force yourself into her sex. That's your heaven true, isn't it, Michael? She needed to die. She's dead. What I like about death is you can never pretend. That joke isn't funny. It's not amusing. Either you're dead or you're not dead. You die. It's final. Death is for good. She had to die. She's dead. Nothing better. Evil. Evil in the flesh. In the mind. In the body. In the organs. In the sex. Evil. Evil everywhere. Emptied out of her sex. A female emptied of her sex. A female emptied of her sex. Crippled. Amputated. Altered. Decimated. Disfigured. Injured. Blinded. The heart bleeds. The heart rattles. The lung gr lungs groan. The head ransacked. Very young, from a very young age. What to do, how to act when you're emptied at a young, young age. And though you fight to stay alive. And though you fight to stay alive. And though you fight to stay alive. Dead. Dead for good. Dead. Dead. It's death. It's the end of death. It's rotten. She stopped dying and rotted, 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 and rotted. She rotted. What do you want? Me? I'm not suffering anymore. She made me suffer. That releases me from my suffering. Oh my, it feels good, so good when you're relieved, when you're relieved of suffering immediately. It pumps well-being in your heart and your whole body. You finally breathe. If you knew how good it feels to relieve yourself, to be able to relieve yourself and to breathe and breathe and breathe again. You see that she's dead. You killed her, killed, and it's clear that she's dead. Dead, dead, it's clear, clear as sunlight. That's funny, you can be funny sometimes, Michael. Funny? That, yes, yes, you can really be from time to time. You think that I don't know, don't see that she's dead, really dead, Penda? <laughs> you tell yourself that she's become crazy, damn crazy, that teacher, teacher, huh? He laughs, he laughs, he laughs, he doesn't stop laughing. I laugh, I laugh, I should have laughed at this, not shed one single tear of laughter. I laugh all the laughs of my body. Because when in reality, when reality surpasses the imagined, you have to laugh at it. I laugh, I should be crying, 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 crying. I laugh, I laugh. I laugh, I laugh away my tears. I laugh, I laugh, I laugh. You think I'm laughing. I'm furious, 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 furious. My heart is blowing up with rage against this demon that took possession of your body. And you think, you say that I'm laughing. Laugh, 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 my laugh. You should laugh about it, laugh. Maybe it will help you understand the pain, all the pain that I have endured. Laugh, 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 Michael. As much as laughter rings in your throat, but I beg you, rid yourself of this rage that is taking possession of your body. My remade sex. You, me, together, like a single body. What could be more beautiful? Crying. You're crying, Michael? There it is. He's crying. Michael's crying. You don't need to, Michael. Not you, Michael. Michael, you don't need to. Not you, Michael. You shouldn't. No, you need to. Need to. Come on, come on. Not you, not you. Let her rot peacefully. It should rot. A person always ends up rotting. I will end up rotting. You will end up rotting. Everyone will end up rotting. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It's not a big deal after all. It's only a body rotting. Hits himself. And now he's hitting himself. Stop hitting yourself like that. You're going to hurt yourself, Michael. Stop right now. No need to hit yourself because you will hurt her. It hurts, hurts, hurts. He just knows and doesn't want you to hurt yourself, Michael. To kill Penn, to stuff her body in this cupboard, bathed in her blood for what? I wanted her to die. I was dying of envy to see her die. She is dead. She will understand that she no longer has reason to start over. Maybe I will love her now. Maybe she will love me now. Maybe we will love each other now. Isn't it true that we will love each other now? After all deaths, we always love them because we pity them, because they are calm and obedient, because they do nothing and just let things take their course. Dead. Dead. When she came back to find me sitting there on the sofa, she couldn't stop vomiting, and I understood, understood, understood everything. Everything, everything. Understood she was pregnant. Pregnant? By whom? What bullshit, he asked. By who? By you, Michael, by you. Don't mess with me. And then I always, always wanted to have a child with you, Michael. Not fair. You're not fair, Michael. The mother, the daughter, the daughter, the mother. She came to cry in my arms to ask me for to forgive her, for to let her come back with you in this house. Nonsense! 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 I didn't say anything right away. Her eyes were drooling with tears to no end. You had to see it. And they are 
Right away, I said to myself, this little girl with a bow came from my ones. Michael touched her, touched her again. Filthy, soiled. She should rest in peace at last and be able to rest in peace. So there, right away, I gave her water with good intention, she thought, to appease her heart. I had put a little something in it, just a little something that would do a trick, a little, just a little something. After you let it take its course, it sneaks through the body. It breaks it, it disintegrates it, it devastates it, it eats it alive. And then gently, slowly, calmly, it takes care of itself. The breath evaporates. The body lets it take its course. And after, nothing. Nothing left pulsating. Everything becomes remains. A sticky shell. And this all scares you, Michael, huh? You're telling yourself that she's supposed to mind, teacher, teacher, huh? You stirred rage again. You stirred my rage against her. And there you have it. There you have it. She found peace, sleeps peacefully in the cupboard. I couldn't take it, Michael, that you have a baby with her. I couldn't. More than my father. More than my mother. I trusted you. Father. Mother. You never had either. They had killed everything when you were still crawling, you told me. You were more than a father, more than a mother to me, and then shit, shit, all shit all this time, Michael. You should have been ashamed of yourself. Hate, detest, despise, abhor every part of your body that soiled, spoiled, tarnished her body. To do what you did is unacceptable. To do what you did is unforgivable. To do what you did, it's intolerable. To do what you did, it's inexcusable. Chase, chasing game. Body, body, fighting. Body, body, struggling. I'll catch you, I'll catch you, I'll catch you. I will cut you up into little pieces, any teeny, teeny, tiny pieces. I'll add salt to add flavor and offer you as a feast to all the stray dogs in town. The need to not remain safe. Sitting there, arms crossed, is clear. You will see, you will see, you will see. I will make you see. You need to do something. I will make you believe it. In these situations, always need to do something. You will understand, you will understand, will understand what it takes, what it tastes like rotten flesh. 99% of people would have done something. You are going to die, and I will delight in the deliciousness of your death, of giving you death. I want you dead, dead, dead. Nothing more than dead, emptied out of your breath, of the body, disgusting. How creative people can be. In Russia, one young girl kills another young girl with a hundred clips of tweezers. It's clear that it's a compromise. That would do the trick. But 100 clips of tweezers, that's slow. That takes time and no time. You are going to die to be buried. Michael. You are going to be buried to die. Michael. To die to be buried. Michael. To be buried to die. Michael. To die. Michael. To be buried. Michael. Die, die, die. Race. Race is running out. Competition, competition is weakening. It's creeping, creeping. Wobble, stumble, and tangle, tangle, collapsing. Pain, pain and straightening. Ow, ow, ow! You're hurting, hurting, hurting me. That hurts, hurts, hurts. And then? And then? Pop, flower, pot. Bangs, bangs. Breaks, breaks. Against the head. Hurts, hurts. Ow, ow, ow! You made me bleed, bleed! Six. Creatures crawl in search of blood. Head, 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 pissing, pissing, blood. Red, red, the blood. Squirt, squirt of blood. What, what, what? Is this red liquid running down your body, Michael? Pepsi or Coca-Cola? Look at your clothes. Red, all red. Let me clean that for you. Penda, Penda, Penda. It's you. It's you, it's you, Penda. Nothing clearer, nothing clearer, nothing clearer than that. Nothing clearer than that. I see, 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 see you, Penda. Beautiful, became more beautiful. Oh, my, the beauty of an angel. What beauty? The snot's there. Oh, heaven, the snot's running from your nose. What is it, Michael? Let me take care of it. Touch, touch, you can touch. Do you feel the bandage on my nose? I made my nose more handsome for you. My nose no longer pleased you. You, you, you were saying, remember, Penda? There you have it. It became proper, your nose. Even glistening your nose. Come here, come here, come here, so that I can inhale your personal scent under your armpits, between your legs, all these good smells contained in your body that I touch, touch, you touch, you. Saliva, your saliva there, oh how foamy, let me lick it. You're drooling like a baby, my darling, handsome. Come here, come here, come here, Penda. I want to touch your body, feel your body vibrate under my fingertips. You like that, huh, to feel my tongue on your lips? They've become softer, my lips. You feel that? I drink your saliva, your filth. I adore your filth, you know. I drink your filth like wine. Here, sit down on the sofa. What are these tears? You're crying, Michael. You're crying again. Stop sniveling like a child. You're not a child, Michael. I beg you, hold me again. Touch me again. Stroke me again. There. Stay Benda. still. Stay still, Michael. You're clean now. Don't you see it now? There's no more blood that pisses, pisses on you. Look at how you're handsome again, more handsome, and you're smooth, criminal, and your gentle scent of Nivea. I smell it again, again, full on in the nose. It penetrates me. Don't move away. Don't move away. Don't move away, Penda. Where are you going like that? Give me your hand. Come back. Come back. Come back. Seven, you see a sight that almost stops your heart. Look at me when I'm speaking to you, Michael. I can strip, take 
take off my clothes, take off my bra, take off my underpants, become naked, spread myself like the hands of a compass for you, let you drive into my sex, smash into me. That would satisfy you to spread my thighs like the hand of a compass, to smash me like a window pane. Do you remember? A drink. A drink. It could last all night long, from midnight to the end of night. A drink. A drink. Spread my thighs like the hand of a compass on the living room sofa to smash me like a window pane all night long, from midnight to the end of night. You could. A drink. A drink. To hear me vibrate like a Yamaha. He loved to hear me vibrate like a Yamaha, so I vibrate like a Yamaha. I would feel the ejaculation of his member in my sex when I vibrated like a Yamaha. Pain or pleasure, he didn't care when I vibrated like a Yamaha. Just wanted to hear me vibrate like a Yamaha. Wind. Wind. When his member was on the verge of drooling, it was ridiculous. Wind. A drink. No, not ridiculous. More terrible. Wind. Wind. Terrible when he clutched onto my body like he was clutching under the trunk of a palm tree. Air. Air. Terrible when his body twisted in every direction. The heart. Air. Terrible when he bit me with his teeth. Heart. Heart. Terrible when he scraped me with his nails. Air. Heart. That pleased him. Air. Heart. He liked it too much, actually. Lungs. Heart. When he clutched my body like he was clutching the trunk of a palm tree, when his body twisted in every direction, when he started to bite me with his teeth, and when he scraped me with his nails, then only then I know how spontan- then only would I howl spontaneously like an old ruined truck, and he erupted in laughter like a crazy person. Lungs. Lungs. <laughs> I only felt pain when I spread my thighs like the hand of a compass, when he smashed me like a window pane, when I vibrated like Yamaha, when I howled like an old ruined truck from midnight to the end of night, I would try to hang on to my courage to withstand it. Lungs. Air. The important thing was that he was there. Breath. Wind. I had someone to share my nights with. Breath. Breath. One morning I woke up, nothing but a paper left on the kitchen table. Breath. Breath. When I go in the house, even a smell had left. His gentle scent of Nivea evaporated. Life. Air. I was alone, all alone. Life. Life. The house was deserted. The air. Breath. Hard to swallow. What is that dark thing coming from no one knows where? Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Pluto, that horrible thing that holds, holds me around the neck, blocks my nose. They're out to get you. The demon's closing in on every side. They will possess you. Fifteen years, maybe even more, maybe even less. Air, breath. Living with you for fifteen years. Breath, air. And to leave me suddenly like that, hard to swallow. Air, Michael, wind, Michael, breath, Michael. Air, breath, breath. Michael, answer me when I speak to you. Take your eyes off the ceiling. Look at me. Talk to me! Asphyxia. 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 They will possess you. They will possess you. They will possess you. Wind, air, breath, life, air, wind, life, lungs, breath, air, wind, life, breath, air, breath, air, breath, wind, breath, life, breath, air, life, breath, air, life, breath, air, breath, air, wind, breath, air, breath, air, breath, air, breath, breath. Michael. 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 Not moaning anymore. Stomach isn't moaning anymore, not moaning anymore. Not beating anymore, not beating anymore. The heart isn't beating anymore, isn't beating anymore. Not pounding anymore, not pounding anymore. The chest isn't pounding anymore, isn't pounding anymore. Eight, let me hold you tight. Corpse on corpse, damned cocktail of the stench of putrefaction, the atrocious perfume of moldy corpses, hazy and unbearable. Effluvium of musty meat, baneful, abominable aroma of rotting flesh. I had her. I had her, Michael. Stub out. Never, never is the word right in the chicken wall. Look at her blood in my palm. Look. That's what you need to do with flies. Never rush. Wait. That's the secret. They always end up coming back. And when they come back, you let them parade around until the right moment, and then bam, bam, you kill them. It's nothing to kill a fly. Everyone, men and women, are unanimous on that. Flies are annoying, so you need to kill them when you can. No sin to pay for, for, for that. A fly, no sin to pay for. The neighbors, the neighbors, the neighbors, pile behind the door, many more and more and that. Knock, 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 tap, 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 bang, 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 knock, tap, bang, tap, knock, bang, knock, bang, tap, tap, bang, knock, bang, knock, tap, bang, tap, knock. Who is knocking ceaselessly on the door like that? I hear voices. Do you have guests? Voices of women! Are they here for you, huh, Michael? Handsome you are. It's normal that all the vile women in the neighborhood are dying to touch you. My word! Who is at the door? I don't even know why you want me to open the door. Your mouth, your mouth, your mouth, your mouth, your mouth. I hear you, I hear you, I hear everything. It stinks, your filthy mouth. I hear everything, everything! A corpse stinks, they know. It stinks, stinks, stinks. It stinks, stinks, stinks. It stinks, stinks, stinks. I can't smell your gentle, agreeable scent of Nivea anymore. Who smells, Michael? Where is that sudden odor of crap coming from? From your body?
body, Michael, your body, huh? Not possible. Your body can't have that horrible order of crap. It still exudes the scent of Nivea. Your so body? Um, the atrocious perfume of putrefaction. She wants to look at her. She embalms him with Nivea. She wants him to smell good that the agreeable odor of Nivea exudes from his body. I breathe. I breathe. I breathe. I smell it. Michael. Nivea. Whispers. Ooh, ha, ha. Babble. Cackles. More and more. Intense. From behind the door. What do they want from us, Michael? They don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop making noise behind the door. Michael, look at me. Why won't you give me there? There, a child. A child I could love. For once, a child perhaps I could love. To pour over them the immense love of a mother. To finally have a child of whom I'd be proud to be a mother. A child whose father isn't the grandfather. Agreeable. Give me that child who will be my child, Michael. I want it. The foulest stench is in the air. The foulest stench is in the air. The foulest stench is in the air. It's coming back, the smell of crap, Michael. You're just smell of Nivea. Where is it, Michael? I barely just finished embalming you with Nivea. Your deodorant is actually empty. Why is that stubborn smell of crap still exuding your body? Let it exude Nivea. I'm having trouble breathing. The smell of crap is stifling me. Look at how I'm breathing. A child, I want it there, 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 there. Not Michael, before my breathing cuts off, or that door is open, before those piled up, before the door empties into the house. I still hear them more numerous. They're becoming pleasure me so that I can breathe. Pleasure me before the door opens, Michael. They're pushing, forcing, pushing, forcing, pushing, forcing, forcing, pushing the door. Do you hear them? Do you hear the bangs? They don't want to stop, Michael. They'll end up smashing in the door. You hear? You hear? You hear? Listen, Michael. Listen. The bangs on the door, the brouhaha, it's full of rage. I feel it, Michael. The brouhaha that I hear, the brouhaha that I hear, it's full of rage. Look at me when I'm speaking to you. Open your mouth. Wet your lips. Speak. 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 Michael, lift your body up a bit. Michael, to feel you inside me, I want in my depths, I want in me deep, deep down, I want you make me drunk with pleasure, I want. You're a strong man, show me that you're a strong man, blood me with pleasure, drool in my sex, dance in my sex. Blows on blows. Blows on blows. Sharp, 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 quick. Wake up, little Michael, I'm talking to you. Outside, listen outside, the boo-ha-ha -ha outside, I didn't even hear the rumbling of the sky that we heard before anymore. Michael, they're still pushing, forcing, pushing, Forcing, pushing, forcing, forcing, pushing, pushing, forcing, pushing, pushing, forcing, pushing, forcing, forcing, pushing, forcing, forcing, pushing the door. The knock, tap, slam, bang, tap, knock, slam, bang, slam, tap, bang, bang, knock, slam, slam, bang, tap, knock, slam, bang, slam, tap, knock, knock, bang, knock, knock, bang, slam, slam. With fists, with feet, with sticks, with rocks, banging, banging. I suffocate, I suffocate, I suffocate, suffocating me, suffocating me, suffocating me, I suffocate, suffocating me, I suffocate. First of all, before we start, I'd just like to say um, it's been a pleasure to work with all of the artists this festival. And um, Hakim Ba did everything right to try to get here. 
Um, and it is a true shame that our government decided not to let him be here. Um, so Hakeem, thank you for being here via the internet. <laughs> um, and thank you for this piece. Salut toi. <laughs> Alors, euh, bien de, bien de te remercier d'être, d'être ici, en principe, euh, on te voit maintenant, euh, et tout le monde de te remercier de, de la pièce. Tu, tu peux entendre Oui, 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 je t'entends, mais c'est un peu décalé. Oui, 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 merci tout le monde aussi. J'ai, euh... <rire> j'ai écouté la... Bon, bon, j'ai regardé la lecture en même temps. Donc, ah, sur, super. Euh, sur, sur le lien que tu, tu m'as envoyé. Ah, c'est génial. So he, he was able to watch uh, with us in live streaming. And he thanked everybody. Um, and then I want to thank um, Ethan and the entire cast for a truly beautiful reading that was wonderful. Um, and so I'd like to start with a couple of questions maybe for Hakeem before I move on and talk to you guys a little bit about um, interpreting this piece. Uh, Hakeem, one of the things that struck me most about this piece uh, was the use of thriller. <laughs> and I just, uh, I think Michael Jackson is such an interesting, iconic um, character for how he spreads globally. And I'm interested in really why thriller for this tale. Donc, Hakim um, Brooke avait posé la question, pourquoi thriller, pourquoi Michael Jackson? Et qu'est-ce que, qu'est-ce que ça veut dire uh, Euh, pour, euh, pour, pour les Africains en général, pour toi peut-être. Et qu'est-ce que, qu'est-ce que, qu'est-ce qui a, t'a fait penser à, à Michael Jackson pour la pièce? <coughs> Au fait, ben, moi je, j'ai grandi avec euh, cette musique un peu de Michael Jackson, donc la pop. So he grew up with Michael Jackson. Et du coup, ça m'intéressait aussi d'interroger justement ce personnage qui a surtout changé de peau. Donc. Euh and, so, and so he was wondering uh, about writing a character um, who, who decides to change his, his skin color. Voilà, voilà, donc sur ce rapport au corps qu'il avait, donc euh, ce, ce rejet aussi qu'il avait même de son propre corps. Et so why is changing his body his own body? Voilà, donc pour moi, Tisha Tisha, c'est ce rapport, c'est-à-dire au corps, où euh, Tisha Tisha, c'est-à-dire qu'elle se bat pour euh, préserver euh, le, le, euh, l'organe, c'est-à-dire de sa, de, son, de sa fille, et après qu'il se retrouve, c'est-à-dire attrapé par ça, par, son, par Michael. Et puis de l'autre côté aussi, c'est la figure de Michael Jackson qui a changé de peau et puis qui s'est... Euh, euh, So on the other hand, you have Tisha Tisha who preserves the body of her daughter when you have somebody else who's defacing his own body um, in, the, in, in the case of Michael Jackson. Heather, can you speak just more into your mic? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, That's excellent. Uh, so I think uh, one of the things that strikes me most about this piece is the language and the use of language, um, whether it be how you use stage directions and write stage directions to repetition, um, to a really kind of sensory experience. Um, and I'm just wondering like how language works for you and, and what's really important to you as a playwright with language. Donc Brooke a été très retournée par, par la, euh, comment, euh, comment tu utilises un langage dans, le, dans la pièce, y compris la poésie, y compris la répétition, et puis aussi euh, la façon de, de de ne pas toujours euh, séparer les mots qu'on dit et les, et les, les, les directions. Um, donc, elle voulait que tu parles un peu à propos de la langue, la langage. Bah, moi, je travaille beaucoup avec la, la répétition dans mon écriture. Et donc, c'est vraiment dans Tisha Tisha, comme il y a, y, a, y a déjà un rapport, c'est-à-dire étouffant par rapport à, à la situation, c'est-à-dire elle a, dû, elle a tué sa, euh, sa fille, et, et du coup, quelquefois, elle cherche les mots, elle se demande comment le dire, et puis euh, après, donc, quand Michael aussi, aussi le cadavre, c'est-à-dire ce, 
c'est l'impossibilité un peu de la parole. Euh, je travaille beaucoup dans cette pièce, il y a beaucoup de cette question. Ça me dit, donc, donc euh, so he, um, he uses a lot of repetition in all his work. Um, but in, the, in, the, in this piece in particular, it was Tisha Tisha not being able to find language to deal with what she's done and what she's lived through, mm -hmm. and then Michael not being able to find language to accept or talk about what he is coming to realize is the truth. Um, okay, I'm gonna open it up a little bit to you guys. Um, considering I've, I've had the privilege of seeing the text, um, <laughs> first of all, there's no markings for who says what or what is stage directions and what is not. Um, so I'm curious, uh, when you first encountered the text, uh, what did you make of it and how did you make those decisions about who did say what? Clearly it's obvious in some parts, but uh, it's not always. And um, I'd love to little, know a little bit more how you engage with the material when you first encountered it. Yeah. Either. Yeah, Heather, 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 why don't you talk? Oh, you no, no, I just want to translate for yeah. 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 um, Brooke Brooke avait, avait posé la question um, au maître en scène et aux comédiennes de comment ils ont décidé qui va dire uh, quoi et comment diviser le texte. So the way it's laid out, and this is also true in the, in the French, uh, is the stage direction, some of the stage directions are in italics, but they are written in verse lines, quite a bit of them. And then the, the, they're, although we know who says the first line, after that it's just indicated by a dash. So um, I, I think we can, all, we can sort of figure out who is, who's who in the dialogue, but there aren't sort of conventional dialogue markings indicated in the text. Um, which I think is what sort of led us to the sense that we should uh, A, incorporate all the stage directions in verbally, mm -hmm. and uh, B, share them chorally, so it's not simply that sometimes the characters are capable of narrating uh, some of their own experience. Yeah. So, he was in the Maître en scène, and he said that, because the directions are written a bit like a poem, Uh, et puis c'est pas toujours clair qu'il parle, bon, c'est toujours bien clair qu'on qu l'un parle à l'autre, mais par rapport à la direction, c'est un peu flou. Donc ils ont décidé de diviser ça un peu comme un cœur euh, dans le, le sens grec, euh, pour qu'on entende tous les mots et puis qu'on divise euh, les directions de ce sens. Euh oui, du coup, j'aime bien le mot cœur et vite que vous utilisez là-dedans parce que pour écrire cette pièce, justement, je suis parti un peu ce, ce, de, de Médée aussi. Donc, il y, avait, il y a cette rencontre entre la, la figure un peu de Médée et puis de Michael Jackson qui, euh, quelque part, voilà, me, 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 me ramène à quelque chose qui m'est très, très proche. D'accord, tout à fait. Uh, so, uh, uh, he said that he, he likes the fact that you brought up the, the, the chorus and the... Uh, and the The, the, the connection with ancient Greece, and actually he was inspired by Medea, which Brooke was talking That's about earlier. Um, by Brooke, <laughs> Steel uh, and sorry, Thunder, Heather. That. So um, the, the, the story of uh, uh, the myth and the play of Medea was influential for his piece, so. Excellent. Um, Et du coup, bon, juste avant de continuer, donc ça fait, je rappelle juste que ça fait partie d'une trilogie qui s'appelle Face à la mort, donc là c'est le premier volet, et donc il parle un peu de, euh, qui parle donc, de Médée. Donc, le deuxième volet, ça s'appelle la vie forte garçon. Et le troisième volet, euh, ça s'appelle Convulsion. Là, par contre, qui révisite un peu le fil de Tieste, Tieste de, 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 de Sénèque. Mais qui parle un peu de la, de, de, de la loterie américaine aussi, Green Card. Voilà. Ça. La troisième pièce, ça parle de Tieste. Mais la ouais. deuxième euh, euh, La deuxième pièce, euh, euh, oui. Donc la 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 ça s'appelle la nuit pour Calzon, mais, oui. mais mais ça apporte euh, 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 pas forcément des mythes euh, connus okay. donc okay. c'est des choses que moi-même j'ai euh, voilà donc c'est le rapport de, de plutôt d'un père qui qui tue la la mère sauver mm -hmm. son fils par exemple oui d'accord uh, so he he wanted to to um point out that this is the first of three plays in a trilogy. The third play is inspired in a way by Thyestes, by Seneca, uh, and all three are connected through different uh, love relationships and how that's explored. Um, the second piece, he, he said, uh, the, the husband kills the wife. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> Sorry, that was maybe creepy. <laughs> 
It's, it's a comedy, though, right? The, the second. <laughs> Elle avait demandé si ce n'est pas une comédie, la deuxième pièce, non? Allô? Elle, a, elle, elle avait dit, c'est pour euh, toute façon, ce n'est pas une comédie, puisqu'elle est présentée. Ah, d'accord. Donc, non, mais, non, mais ça, ça parle beaucoup de, de sport, ce qui s'est passé au Brésil, la réflexion, en fait, pour l'organisation de la Coupe du Monde. Et puis, euh, comme je parlais, en fait, il y a beaucoup de rapport aussi à la tragédie là-dedans. Donc, de de quelqu'un qui change de métier après, donc qui devient un peu euh, euh, policier, et puis euh, voilà, tout ça. Mais il y a toujours la, de rapport tragique là-dedans. Well, <laughs> c'est pas du tout tra tragique. Um, it has, uh, in some way, it was inspired by um, situations going on in Brazil uh, during the, when they were preparing for the World Cup. And um, I know you do a lot of supporting of work in Guinea, even though you live in Paris, Hakeem, and I was just curious to know, um, who do you write most of your pieces for? What, what are your audiences? Are they both in Europe? Are they also in Africa or in Guinea, where you, I know you produce a festival um, there, so I'm curious to know, uh, in specific this piece, uh, who is your intended audience? Donc, euh, comme tu es entre Paris et puis bien la France et Guinée-Conakry, euh, Brooke avait posé la question, pour qui est-ce que tu écris Qui est ton public euh, idéal Qui est, est le public ou le lecteur que tu veux euh, euh, qui apprécie la, la, tes pièces euh, bon, Moi, je conçois l'écriture. En fait, quand j'écris, je pense plutôt à mon rapport au monde, à, à mon rapport aux autres, c'est-à-dire à... à à, me, à, à ce que je vois, à ce que j'entends. Donc je, ne, je cherche à ce que mes textes à dire, puissent s'ouvrir à d'autres, que ça ne soit pas juste, par exemple, quand on est qu'à l'Afrique, que ça ne parle pas, que, que ça ne, que, que ça ne, euh, ne, ne, ne s'adresse pas à un public africain, mais que ça puisse s'ouvrir au monde, en fait. So, uh, in short, he said that he likes to think that he, when he writes, um, he is reflecting what he sees in the world and that he wants to open, every, uh, open his writing up to everybody in the world, not just for an African audience or a French audience, but for everyone in the world. I think Michael... C'est pour ça que je parle de mythes et de l'héritage aussi commun, là, comme uh, Michael Jackson, et puis je parle aussi des mythes pour, uh, pour, pour ça que j'essaie de exister ça aujourd'hui. Hence the use of myths that are well known, the use of an iconi iconic figure like Michael Jackson. <coughs> I was gonna say, Michael, Michael Jackson crosses borders. <laughs> um, I think it'd be really great to open up questions to the audience to see if anybody else would like to ask a question of either Hakeem or um, this beautiful team up here who did a great job. The front? Uh, I just thought that was an amazing reading and I'm wondering, um, this is really for you as translator uh, and also for Hakeem, um, are the rhythms similar in the French and in the English? Because it was just uh, extraordinary, the propulsion of this piece. Thank you. So, she said it was extraordinary, the fact that the words were being projected, projeted, were continuing like that. So, and the rhythm and the words. She asked if it was the same thing in English and in French. So Hakim was an incredibly generous playwright uh, to work with as a translator, and I really tried to keep true to the poetry in his in his words uh, and the rhythm, the sense of rhythm. And uh, sometimes I would make choices that because when we discuss things, uh, when I wasn't sure, I could go one way, I could go another way. And obviously, in French, there are a lot of um, uh, connotations of of, wor of particular words that may not exist in the English equivalent. Um, so. He, uh, and I, I think we both felt that it was more important to get the, the idea, the essential idea across, than it was to keep the, ver the same exact play on words, and sometimes those shifted a little bit. Um, but the rhythm was, was really crucial to keeping that going. I'd love to just throw that to the cast, too. Inside that rhythm, was there anything that struck you reading it uh, today? Because we were very taken just earlier with how, how it sort of keeps, it just keeps coming at you, and there's a kind of like, um, a word web that gets, that the words keep getting hit over and over and over again, mm -hmm. that they accumulate mm -hmm. uh, through the course of the, of the play. But was there anything that you noticed uh, today? I just want to say, I'm just going to 
Yeah. Donc, il avait remarqué que les mots sont tous connectés, que et la répétition et, et comment euh, la façon de jouer entre les mots. Euh, elle a posé, et, il a posé la question euh, aux, com aux comédiens. I, I think what what I what really struck out to me was the which specific words were being utilized over and over and over again within a sentence. And if I had more time to kind of dissect it, I would be wondering why Michael is reiterating this word over and over and over and over and over again. Why why specifically if it's a verb or a noun or an adjective and, and how that what that does to the text and his his psyche in that particular moment. Um, that's one thing that really stood out to me. Donc pour lui c'était très important euh, les mots qu'on a fait répéter. Pourquoi ce mot répété répété Qu'est-ce que ça a à voir avec euh, les pensées de Michael Pourquoi ce mot par exemple est très important à répéter yeah, There's something so delightful working on a piece with language like this where the playwright has worked so specifically um, and done so much work in detail so as an actor you feel like you can really just release yourself to the language and just like focus on the words and the vowels and the consonants and that that evokes the essence of what's happening and when you say suffocating me suffocating me suffocating me over and over again you start to lose your breath you can't do it and so it's the exact <laughs> essence of what it is that you're saying um so it's 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 such a wonderful piece because you really can just like turn your brain off and just give your body to it and the language just guides you through in such a beautiful way Um, and it's, it's so much fun as an actor to get to work on pieces like that. <laughs> Alors, il dit que c'était très am amusant de jouer, euh, puisque tu as trop travaillé la, le langage qui a pu se mettre le corps là-dedans, puisque les mots exigent toujours euh, une, euh, des actions du corps. My favorite part about both of their characters were their death scenes, and I've never heard death scenes verbalized before. <laughs> like, they're talking along with their emotions and physical deaths, you know? And I thought that was really interesting to watch and hear, and I've never seen that, and that was amazing to me. Elle avait remarqué que euh, toutes les deux, euh, quand ils sont en train de mourir, on entend tout. Et au lieu de voir quelqu'un en train de mourir, on entend. Et c'est la première façon qu'on n'a jamais euh, aperçu ça dans une pièce, et c'était remarquable. Excellent. Are there any other questions maybe that we get? The language is so powerful at times and uh, it absolutely sneaks up on you and is so moving and surprisingly moving. And I thought about the staging of it all the time because it, the language is so, in essence, theatrical. Mm -hmm. And I thought if they ever touched It, I feel like something would be lost, mm -hmm. that the language is the thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, would, I wonder about the staging and whether how, how frightening it would be that it became illustrative mm -hmm. and how my, uh, I can um, seize it being staged. Uh, donc, c'est une, uh, une autre écrivaine qui te parle, qui te pose la question. Um, elle avait dit que le langage est tellement remarquable, c'est tellement fort. Mais euh, elle demande euh, comment est-ce que ça peut se faire euh, à la mise en scène. Puisque si on va mettre en scène euh, euh, une action au lieu de l'entendre quand tu l'as écrit, on va peut-être risquer de perdre quelque chose. Euh, euh, du coup, bon, moi, avant de venir au théâtre, j'ai commencé par la poésie. Et du coup, mon rapport au poème, c'est pour ça que j'aime bien le mot poème euh, dont, euh, dont on a parlé tout à l'heure. Donc moi, c'est le rapport au poème, c'est-à-dire quand j'écris, je pense plutôt, c'est-à-dire, euh, je considère l'écriture comme un geste et la mise en scène comme un autre geste. Donc quand j'écris, je, je ne pense pas forcément à ce que ça sera sur scène. So, uh, he, he started writing, um, as a, uh, writing poetry, that was what he first wrote. He then went on to start writing short stories and then came into theater and he kept the poetry. So he doesn't, when he writes, he doesn't necessarily think about, um, about the staging uh, so much as he thinks about uh, bringing, uh, bringing the words into, into the characters. If I can just quickly... Et du coup, pour, pour l'écriture de cette pièce, donc j'ai travaillé avec des comédiens au plateau euh, donc euh, j'ai testé des choses en, 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 avec eux, euh, 
le rythme et puis la répétition, donc ça m'a permis de doser et puis de supprimer d'autres choses, donc d'être au bon endroit. Donc ça a été un travail au plateau, donc j'ai fait un chantier d'écriture au plateau au Théâtre de l'Aquarium avec le collectif Amour Découvert en 2013. Donc voilà, donc ça a permis aussi de voir comment ça répond sur scène et puis l'engagement du corps surtout du comédien. C'était quand, oui, tu, tu as travaillé ça avec les comédiens quand tu étais en train de l'écrire, non, de, de le développer. Oh. D'accord. Et c'était, euh, c'était en France, non? Oui, oui, oui c'est en France, c'est au théâtre de l'Aquarium. Ok, so he, he, he just noted that um, when he was writing the piece, he actually developed it with actors so that uh, he played a lot with them speaking the words and hearing it uh, and, and the repetition and everything. It's, it's interesting, you know, the very first stage direction is one about smell, uh, uh, which is one of the few things we really can't do effectively on stage. Is uh, the, the olfactory theater is still in its absolute infancy technologically. So um, it's just, you know, you look at that as a director and the first thing you think is, well, that's interesting. Uh, how can we get that on stage? Well, we can get that on stage via words, obviously. So I, I would think any any staging would maybe would borrow something from a, an approach you might take to a Greek text or something like that, where you would try and incorporate some of the descriptive elements of the text into the actual performance really directly, because I think they'll be more evocative that way than anything we could do. I mean, I, you know, there would be some physical gestures, but if we did all of them exactly as described, I think they would lose some of their power, as you suggested. Donc, en, en tant que maître en scène, il avait remarqué que la première chose qu'on lit, c'est à propos des, des sons, ce qu'on sent. Et, et comment est-ce qu'on peut mettre en scène les sons, les odeurs, ça ne ça, ça peut pas se faire. Donc, et, en pensant comme, comme, comme on pouvait euh, faire monter ça euh, en scène, et, et, il avait pensé que peut-être il faut garder toujours euh, un sens de, de la poésie et qu'on euh, on ne peut pas achever ce même sens euh, par les gestes tout simplement. What did Hakim as the playwright think of the speed of delivery of the actors? Il a demandé ce que tu as pensé à propos des, des comédiennes et surtout à propos de, de leur façon de parler très vite. Can, can I say one thing before Hakim answers? Okay. Uh, he didn't, we didn't tell him how fast we were going to do it and he doesn't speak English. <laughs> so he might have had a different relationship to the speed. Uh, alors, <laughs> alors qu'est-ce que tu as pensé à propos, de, à propos des comédiennes? Ça a un effet, euh, au fait, le fait d'entendre sa pièce dans une autre langue sans forcément comprendre la langue, ça fait, c'est un effet, euh, je sais pas, c'est comme si je comprenais ce qu'il se disait, au fait, mais je, à, tra à, tra à travers le rythme, donc je voyais bien le rythme euh, 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 dans la voix des comédiens, dans la, voix, dans la manière de porter le, le texte, et, et du coup ça me permettait de suivre. Donc, euh, celle qui a joué Tisha Tisha, elle, était, euh, elle est étonnante donc, dans sa voix. Et du coup, moi, euh, ça dit, quand j'écrivais la pièce, il y avait vraiment ce rythme un peu d'étouffement qu'on sentait aussi dans les corps de, de tous les comédiens, en fait. Donc, il y a ce rapport à l'étouffement qu'on qu sent, qu euh, voilà. Donc, c'était une très belle lecture pour moi. Je l'ai gardé ça en vidéo, et, mais c'est... Voilà. Il a dit que c'était une très belle lecture. He said, uh, so he doesn't speak English, and the fact of following the, the reading in a language that he didn't understand, uh, despite that, because of the rhythm, uh, he was able to understand exactly what you were saying. And he was particularly struck by, uh, by the, the reading of Tisha Tisha, um, but also by the way that you both embodied uh, so much through your breathing and the way that you, uh, the way that you spoke. One thing about the text you know, that we paid attention to is there's very little punctuation within it. And I think to your question that that, that suggested to us that, that there was a real urgency uh, to it to sort of rush to get to the, where the punctuation was. And then sometimes he'll set one or two words on a single line and those are, much as you would do with a Shakespeare text, that might be an indication to uh, give that more weight 
and more space. And I think we could, with more time, probably develop that uh, more intricately and, and, and maybe even make more sense out of that than we were able to uh, at a sort of first, uh, first pass. Quand même, il n'y avait pas beaucoup de ponctuation, ça avait un sens d'urgence qu'on voulait euh, bien sûr garder. D'autres, euh, il avait aussi, Ethan avait aussi remarqué que euh, la façon que tu as fait euh, répéter quelques mots, ça a fait que, euh, OK, là, il faut bien exiger ce mot-là. Euh, donc, euh, on, a, on a travaillé le texte un peu comme on, travaille, euh, on peut travailler un texte de Shakespeare. I think we have time for about one more question. Hearing the play, is this okay? Yeah. I constantly thought about Beckett, and I constantly thought about Gertrude Stein, yeah. and they were both on speed. <laughs> but, uh, but I had the Greek, the Greek chorus was in the background. And I have to say, as a translator of poetry and now Strindberg's verse play, um, that the most important thing is always the rhythm. So I, and it was fantastic. Thank you for the play and thank you for the performance. Uh, elle avait dit que uh, dans la pièce, uh, le rythme, c'était très important et c'était très, très fort. Alors elle a été remerciée de la pièce. Elle avait aussi remarqué que ça, ça lui a fait penser à, à, à Beckett et à Gertrude Stein. It's funny, both of those came up today when we were working on it, Beckett and, and Stein. And, and the other person I thought of, interestingly, was Joyce. Uh, and a bit of Finnegan's Wake and uh, the end of Ulysses, uh, particularly. Ethan aussi avait pensé à Beckett et à Gertrude Stein en discutant de la pièce avec les comédiens. Il a aussi pensé au livre de James Joyce. Finnegan's Wake. Finnegan's Wake. It's quite a pantheon we put Hakim in today. So, so far, Shakespeare, Joyce, Beckett. It's good. Congratulations. Si vous parlez de Shakespeare, Joyce, Beckett ou Gertrude Stein, mais voilà. Et du coup, au fait, par rapport à Beckett, c'est Beckett, c'est ça? Oui, Samuel Beckett, oui. Oui, donc oui, au fait, moi, c'est Beckett qui m'a donné envie d'écrire du théâtre. En fait, c'est quand j'ai dit à Nathan Coteau que j'ai écrit ma première pièce qui s'appelle Sur la pelouse. Donc, euh, après, bon, j'ai lu Au les beaux jours et puis fin de partie. Pour moi, c'est des pièces qui me traversent dans mon écriture jusqu'à aujourd'hui. Et l'autre chose aussi, c'est qu'il y a un auteur américain qui s'appelle Faulkner. Donc, Tisha Tisha, si j'ai écrit aussi, voilà, Tisha Tisha aussi, c'est à travers une nouvelle de Faulkner. Donc, j'ai beaucoup lu au moment euh, les, euh, les nouvelles de Faulkner, euh, ces romans. Donc, ils m'ont aussi traversé les personnages dont ils convoquent des cadavres quelquefois. Donc, voilà, donc ça, c'est des choses qui m'ont. Uh, so the first, uh, some of the first plays that, uh, that you know, first literature that Hakim read were the plays of Beckett. And that inspired him to write the theater in the beginning. Um, but, and I didn't know this part, but he said that he also was really inspired in this play by the novels of William Faulkner. Mm -hmm. So there we go, there's our American connection, <laughs> aside from Michael Jackson. Um, uh, Heather, I'd like to give you a special thanks. You brought us the text. You translated the text. Um, um, and Hakeem, I'm sure it's probably midnight or 1 a.m. in Paris. Thank you for joining us, even with a new baby. Um, we miss you and we wish you were here. And I also just want to finally Thank this cast. What a great job. It's been a true honor. Thank you for taking the time, guys. Thank you for coming. Merci à Brooke, Ita, et puis les comédiens, le metteur en scène. Donc c'était un chouette moment pour moi de vous regarder comme ça par vidéo. Donc voilà, merci infiniment. Merci. Bonne nuit.